When you think of traveling to Australia, the first thing you probably think of is the dangerous wildlife. Venomous snakes, crocodiles capable of snapping their jaws with 5,000 pounds of force per square inch, or the potentially fatal poisonous spiders that are actually present in many contemporary Australian households. And if that wasn't dangerous enough, you have the blistering heat and drought problems that could leave you dehydrated or dead. Fortunately, what I've described couldn't be further from the truth of what you should expect when you travel to this amazing land. Assuming, of course, that you're part of the 99% who will be traveling Australia's coasts. If you're traveling through the outback, then this video isn't for you. Outback living and city living are two very different worlds in Australia, and it's important to understand the difference before traveling here. Hi, my name's Jacob, and I'm filming this in Perth, Western Australia. It's actually the most isolated capital city in the world. So if you came here, you could say you've been to the most isolated capital city in the world. Right now, we're at a well-known capital tourist spot called Kings Park, which overlooks the city here. I made this video because having traveled a lot around the world, and working in the tourism industry, I've come to realize that there is a lot of misinformation surrounding Australia, and useful information is actually hard to come by. I want to start by addressing the safety stereotypes of the country. I can tell you from personally traveling the world that Australian cities are some of the safest on earth, so you need not fret. We're in the middle of a tectonic plate, so earthquakes aren't really a thing. Nor are active volcanoes. Gun violence is minimal. In fact, here in Perth I hear about gun violence maybe a couple times a year, at most. Terrorism and gang violence are also minimal. You won't have to worry about crocodiles really unless you travel to the Northern Territory. And spiders are generally more so present in older houses with wooden floorboards. Snakes generally stay away from civilization and noise. You probably won't be facing any kangaroos attempting to box with you either. In fact, kangaroos generally aren't present in any major cities in Australia, apart from Canberra really. But you can easily see them if you simply drive about 20 minutes towards the city's outer limits. But I'd recommend you be responsible. They're not necessarily dangerous, just make sure that you aren't getting too close to the young when there's a protective mother or father around. Now that I've gotten some of that out of the way, I'd like to talk a little bit about the people you might encounter here. Australian people are generally very social and will want to be your friend, but I would highly recommend that you understand what we're like before you come here. The Australian personality is very different to what you might encounter in the rest of the world. And I plan on making a video specifically about the Australian personality later on. I'll provide the link when I do. In the meantime, I recommend that you at least learn some of the slang that we use here. We've developed kind of an Australian English here that can be hard to understand, and none of it makes any sense, so I'll provide a link in the description that might help you understand. So as I said, I'm assuming that you'll be traveling to one of our major coastal cities like here in Perth, or over east in Sydney, or Melbourne, or the Gold Coast, or Canberra, or even up north to Darwin, or inland to Adelaide. Although most of the people with limited resources and time will only travel to Perth, Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane. Unfortunately, Australia is kind of a difficult country to travel, but well worth it. Interestingly enough, some of the best things to see and do aren't in the major cities themselves, but surrounding them. In fact, if you go to the downtown area of Perth, you might be disappointed to learn it's actually not that big or interesting. For that reason, I'd recommend that you rent a vehicle so you can travel the coast with more ease and stop at some of the sites, which include cliffs, rock formations, jetties, caves, waterfalls, and tens and thousands of miles of crystalline beaches. The beautiful thing about Australia is that many of these things are free, with free parking and it's not difficult to find a picture-perfect beach and literally be the only one there. If you decide to stick to the major cities though, you'll do fine with public transport, walking or cycling. Just do your research, and remember there's a lot of absolutely amazing stuff to see here in Australia. But there's a whole lot of nothing too. Speaking of which, when you come here, the first thing you'll probably notice besides the great weather is that Australia is very clean and well-maintained. From the roads, to the buildings, to the train tracks, to the cars. And that's because the money spent by the government here is usually spent on the cities. The benefit to having a whole lot of nothing in the outback is that the money can be focused and well spent. 
Our infrastructure is simple but clean and reliable. So, so far I've spoken about visiting the coasts. Interestingly, most Australian residents enjoy getting away to smaller cities for their vacations. Here in Perth, it's very common for locals to enjoy a holiday going south, driving down to some of our smaller coastal cities and wine regions, which, as I said, is great to do if you have a car, and especially if you enjoy nature. But while you're in the cities, it's much like traveling anywhere else. Use Yelp to get your restaurant reviews, take pictures of your classic tourist spots, it's worth pointing out that in most countries, when you get out of major cities, things get cheaper. But in Australia, it's the opposite. Things generally are more expensive in rural areas, so I recommend doing your shopping in the cities or surrounding the cities. I highly advise against shopping in fuel stations or truck stops. In Australia, these places are always overpriced. Do your shopping in our local grocery chains like Coles, Woolworths and IGA. I hope this video gave you some food for thought and unconventional wisdom for your visit here to Australia. I tried to give you some advice through the eyes of a tourist. If you're still on the ropes about whether or not to visit Australia, I would highly recommend that you do. The worst part really is the flight. Just do your research on local attractions and also the weather. Remember our summer can be harsh and so can our winters. Travel guide Lonely Planet named Fremantle Western Australia as one of the top 10 places to visit in 2016. Fremantle is only about 15 miles away from Perth, it's easily accessible via bus or train. It's in Fremantle that you'll find the classic architecture and the art scene and the craft beer and the rich culture. Its history actually dates back to 1829. Fremantle Historical Bus Tours is the only bus tour in the area. It's a family-owned business that have been in the area for over 50 years and can let you know some of the secrets and travel advice that you won't find anywhere else. And I mean anywhere. I put a link to our stuff down there in the description. If you'd like to contact me about the tour or any further travel advice for Australia, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thanks.